Hello YouTube, how's everyone doing? It's Professional here. So today I have a very special video for you guys. Today is the 10 year anniversary of GTA Online. GTA Online is 10 years old today. It came out on October 1st, 2013. And GTA Online is my all time favorite online games. Out of all the online games I've ever played in my life, this is my favorite online game. It's not a perfect game. It definitely has its issues, and the developer also makes a ton of mistakes. However, though, I have enjoyed it over the years, and it's also brought me a lot of, of enjoyment, a lot of fun. But on top of that, this game is also what grew my channel. I would not be at a million subscribers today if it was not for this game. Not every single one of my subscribers are from GTA Online, but a huge chunk of them are from GTA Online, and I did do enjoy making guides in this game, and will continue to keep supporting this game for as long as the game is up and as long as Rockstar keeps updating it. But anyways, on this video, we're going to be ranking every single GTA Online update from worst to best. This is a video that you guys have requested on my channel for years. For years, I have seen this comment, Professional, can you rate all the updates from worst to best? And I wanted to wait for a special occasion. I was waiting until GTA Online ends when it releases its final update to release that video, but then I was thinking, you know what? Why don't I do it on the 10 year anniversary? I think that that would be a perfect video to do. So on this video, we're gonna be ranking every update from worst to best, and on top of that, I will be using a scale of four on this video. Each update, I will be rating on four scales. Those four scales are worst for the absolute worst updates, Average for kind of okay updates, had some fun things, might have had some bad things, but were overall just average. Great updates that were pretty fun, but weren't like amazing. And then best, updates that were the best and were what really made the game shine. So I hope that you guys enjoy this, and I will be basing my scale personally on different factors, like how much money you make in the DLC, how fun the missions are, did the DLC bring in anything annoying? You know, basically things like that. And so some of these DLCs that I say are bad DLCs, you guys might like and you guys might enjoy. But I'm just letting you know, this is just my opinion and how I just personally feel like about these DLCs. So feel free to disagree with me if you have some disagreements, but let's try to keep it civil in the comments. So I hope you guys enjoy this video, ranking every single GT Online DLC from worst to best. Let's get started right here. Also, I want to note that for this video, I will not be focusing on um, smaller updates that did not add that much content, like updates that like maybe added like one or two guns and a few new few cars. I'll be focusing on large updates and the very important updates. The only really small update that I'll be focusing on this video is starting off here at number 24, right at the start. Now, the worst update of all time in GT Online, I had to think about this for a little bit, and I was thinking really... There is no single worst update. I was instead thinking, what was the worst time in GT Online? And that is 2013 and updates, I would say. The first year that this game launched, I would probably say this game was in its worst possible state. Why was 2013 such a bad time? Why did it suck so much? And this is the thing is, what I was talking about, is that there's so many GT Online players that don't have any idea how disastrous the launch was. They act like the launch was just perfectly smooth when I'm telling you, no, it wasn't. So what, what went wrong with the launch? When GT Online first launched in 2013, October 1st, 2013, I remember, I could barely get into a game the first day that it came out. The servers were just so bad, they were just not ready for it, even though GT Online had been delayed for two weeks. September 17th, single player came out, October 1st, 2013, the online came out. Even though they had a two-week delay to get everything ready, the servers were a disaster. You'd lag out like crazy, they were, the cloud screen was even worse than it is now, much, much worse. And the worst part about it is that characters would get deleted. They would get deleted repeatedly. I made a character, I grinded all day doing contact missions, and at that time, contact missions was really the only thing that we could do, and those contact missions, a lot of them were capped at a specific amount. Rockstar later changed this, where the longer you take, up to 15 minutes, the more money you get on these missions. Back then, didn't matter how hard the mission was, you would get a specific rate depending on the mission, and so it really sucked. And I spent all day, I remember, all day, I was playing like seven or eight hours, and I grinded, and I got all the way up to level 18, I bought my first two-car apartment garage, log in the next day, boom, my character's deleted, it's gone, because of the terrible service, that's how much of a disaster it was. However, though, later in October, we had gotten our first DLC, which was the Beach Bomb DLC, which you guys see me dr driving the van, this was probably really the one of the first DLC vehicles, if not the first, which is this, um, uh, the Paradise van. Now, with this update, we had gotten the van, we had gotten a little bit of 
beach clothing, and we had gotten our first brand new gun, the SNS pistol, which to be fair, the SNS pistol was terrible. It's one of the worst guns in the game. And even Rockst even years later, Rockstar made a Mark II variant of it, hoping that some people would use it, but still, even with the Mark II variant, even of hollow point rounds, it still sucks. Nobody really uses it. So 2013 was a disaster, and it gets worse, guys. In 2013, what ended up happening is modders soon invaded. I was so surprised, I was so shocked that modders had broken GTA Online that fast. That didn't happen on GTA 4 on PS3. Sure, there's GT there's hackers on GTA 4 on PS3 now, but it didn't happen for many, many years. And now on GTA Online, when it launched, it was like within just the first few weeks, you had modders. And I remember I was just sitting in my apartment all of a sudden, and some guy gives me like $200 million dollars. I didn't even ask for it. I didn't want that, and I was scared I was going to get banned. And what ended up happening is a few days later, or I think like a week later, the money got taken away, which I was grateful for at least. But I remember those modders got sort of control. They were doing all these crazy money drops, and what they were doing is they were sending like $100 million bounties on people, and people were going after them. It was just a, a disaster. However, though, one of the things that was actually good in 2013, even though the support was terrible in that, Rockstar should have, I think, probably focused on giving us a bigger, better update to keep players, because after a disaster, like that, I think they should have put a little bit more effort into making a better update for people once they obviously made the fixes in the game. The One of the best things in 2013 we had was the creator mode. Creator mode, we were able to, with the creator update, we were able to create races, we were able to create death matches. So that was, I would say, is one thing that was actually good about 2013. Later, it was expanded to survivals, and we were also expanded to stunt races. But I'm telling you, this, the 2013 launch was an absolute disaster. And oh, if you played 2013, you would know exactly what I'm talking about. That was probably the worst time in GTA Online. And number 23 in the worst category, what do we have? That's right, it is Southern San Andreas Super Sports Series. Uh, this, I would say, is probably the single most disappointing and one of the worst updates in the entire game. Now, why is this update so bad? A lot of people say that Arena Wars is probably the most worst DLC in GT Online, but if I was to point to a single worst DLC, like I said, I don't think that there's a single worst one. I would say that it has to be Southern San Andreas Super Sports. Why is this DLC so bad? For the simple reason that... It was advertised as an entire DLC, it even has DLC art, and yet it added nothing new. The Southern San Andreas Super Sports, what this update basically was, it added hot ring circuits into the stunt races. So we had gotten the stunt races back in, um, what was that, August of 2016, and then um, a year and a half later, we had gotten this, uh, this update in March of 2018, which was hot ring races, a few other races, they did add a few cars, don't get me wrong in that, but it just really didn't offer anything. Like, for example, I tried to invite people to see who, who would play with me, and the thing is, I was appearing online, I have 2,000 people on my friends list, people know my YouTube channel, and I was just sending out invites, and yet nobody still wanted to join me. I was surprised. I thought that I'd at least be able to get a few friends in, a few players in. One of my friends, Rex, did join, which I want to thank Rex for participating in this, but uh, but nobody else wanted to join. And honestly, I don't blame them, because a lot of these races are pretty boring. Nobody does them anymore. And so we were just doing these races. I We did this race for 11 minutes, seven laps. And we were playing fair. We weren't, like, crashing into each other on purpose. And uh, at, halfway through the race, my controller actually died. Um, but uh, thank you to Rex for being, you know, nice to wait for me until, you know, my con I plugged my controller back in, and I back up to him so we could have a fair race but um we continued the race and what did we get at the end of the race i got um twelve thousand dollars for being second place and rex got sixteen thousand and i thought when i asked rex how much money did he get he told me six uh, i thought he said sixty thousand at first and i was like oh thinking to myself oh you know that's not that bad but then he's like no no it's, it's sixteen thousand and i was like oh man Oh, wow. Yeah, so that's basically it. It didn't offer anything new, at least Arena Wars, despite how bad that update is, at least that offered something new, something different. This was an update that just did not offer anything new, anything special. At number 22, for the worst DLCs, we have Arena Wars. This is a DLC that I bet a lot of people knew was going to 100% was going to be in the worst category. So why does Arena Wars suck so much? Simply because of this. We're going to get rich, right? I conquered 3D cinema, then I conquered reality TV, then I conquered sequels, and now short format web TV. 
Thanks to you two. Well, I'm gonna get a star and a prize, and you're gonna get rich. Okay, I need to get an entirely non-erotic, medically supervised massage to calm down. I love you both. We're gonna get rich. I'll see you later. Remember, we shoot after lunch. This DLC came out of nowhere. In December of 2018, nobody expected this. Nobody expected some big demolition derby, you know, arena DLC. Nobody really predicted it or saw something like that coming. But what I will say is that this DLC, it has content. It has a lot of stuff to it. It's a big DLC. This is actually one of the biggest DLCs. If I was to make a video on the top 10 biggest DLCs, this DLC would definitely be on that list. So it is a, def a big DLC. It adds, you know, the arena workshop, a new property, tons of new vehicles, and tons of new modes in the arena. And it adds a lot of new clothing as well. But if it's such a big update professional, why is it so bad? Reason? It's because the pay is just so terrible. It has the worst paywalls that I've ever seen in the game. But let's start with the pay. If you run the arena, even if you're running it with a lot of players and you get a lot of kills and you win first place, chances are you're not going to get paid that well. Maybe like 20, 30 grand. Obviously, it depends on how long the thing goes for. But this is a DLC that was set up based on players. You should never, ever have a DLC in a game like GTA Online that is based only on PvP, and it's going to be a disaster. This is the fastest dying DLC ever. I even made a poll asking people what the fastest dying DLC was, and people named this DLC. Because this DLC relied entirely on PvP contact, if you don't have players doing PvP, then the DLC's dead. It's done at that point, and that's exactly what happened. This DLC, nobody plays this DLC anymore. Nobody goes on it. You can't even find a match. You might be able to find a match when it's double money, and I can usually fill up a match on live streams. And when I do play this on live streams, it is fun. I will admit that. When we actually get some good teams going here, and we're just killing each other in the arena, it is fun, it is enjoyable. But because the pay is just so bad, and it's so expensive, you've got annoying paywalls where you have like three different versions of the car. You've got the Nightmare variant, the Apocalyptic variant, and the Future variant. And the really annoying thing about this is you cannot swap out the variants whenever you want. So that means if I get like a ZR sports car and I get that in the apocalyptic variant, but then I want to switch to the futuristic variant, I have to buy a separate ZR car and then I have to buy a separate ZR car for the nightmare variant. And it's just absolutely annoying having to buy three variants of the cars. You just want a cosmetic difference. It's just ridiculous. Why would you not be able to change that inside the arena workshop? And it gets worse because remember the paywalls that I talked about? Well, this DLC has takes the king for the worst paywalls, even worse than research. Because when you actually go into the arena, if you spend hundreds of millions of dollars like I did, like I spent so much money on this, on this, you know, workshop and all these vehicles, I customized and bought every single arena vehicle. If you buy the custom vehicles that have weapons on them and then somebody is hosting that has optional weapons turned on, you will have weapons on your vehicle and the other person won't have weapons in that vehicle, putting that player at a massive disadvantage. So whoever spends the most on these vehicles, chances are they're going to be driving the better vehicle unless that person turns off custom vehicles. And the trade prices were so randomized. There wasn't like a specific level that you would get to and you unlock a set trade price. Instead, it was random. So whenever you'd level up, you'd unlock a random trade price. And I haven't even unlocked all of them yet. And this DLC is, over, is almost five years old at this point. And the trade price even applies to clothes. Why would you have a trade price on clothes? It makes no sense. And you have such outfits that are such ridiculously expensive. Why would you have such clothing that's just such ridiculously expensive and you put it behind trade prices? My god. I'm sorry about my rant here, guys, but this was one DLC that just I still have not not forgotten this because it's just been so bad. It's a DLC that had so much content to it, but the execution of it was absolutely terrible. What could have Rockstar have done to make this DLC better? Three things. First of all, allow people to switch out the variants of the vehicles from Nightmare to Futuristic to Apocalyptic. Don't have them buy separate vehicles. Secondly, get rid of the annoying trade prices. Get rid of that. Don't have it randomized. Decrease the prices on this. Increase the amount of money that you make from this, from this mode. And on top of that, the third thing. This is what could have kept the DLC alive. Why was there no co-op modes in this? You know, Vice City, you know, a 2000, you know, a, a 2002 game had literally an arena in, inside it. 
so why why can we not have bots in a you know a game that comes out in 2013 an update that comes out in 2018 there should have been a survival mode like four players where you can choose whatever vehicle that you want and you have to go up against ai vehicles and there's like ai vehicles trying to kill you with guns and stuff like that and you gotta survive with your teammates and just blow them all up and then maybe like a boss spawns at the end like a monster truck boss and then everybody has to fight him or something like that if you had a, a co-op survival mode that could have saved arena wars and that could have been done really well but basing an entire dlc on just pvp and throwing in a ton of paywalls this was just a recipe for disaster it was a complete failure and now nobody plays this dlc unless it's double money Moving on to number 21, again, the worst category is we have the Los Santos Summer Special. This came out in August of 2020, and this DLC is probably one of the most forgetful DLCs ever. If I was to name the top five most forgetful DLCs, I think this would probably be number one on that list because so many people have forgotten this DLC. But this DLC came out um, in the middle of the pandemic. A lot of us were home. We didn't really have much to do, and so we were hoping for a larger DLC, something bigger to do on GT Online. Line. But to be fair, though, I can't really criticize Rockstar that much here because uh, they were probably, you know, going through the exact same things we were. A lot of their developers were probably home, which explains why we had gotten a smaller DLC, though. I will say this DLC was not great. It was not a fun DLC. So I understand why it's kind of small, but I'm just trying to say is it was it was not an enjoyable DLC. It wasn't a fun one. So what the Super um, uh, Los Angeles um, Summer Special, also known as the Super Yacht of Life um, uh, update, basically did is it included these you know yacht missions. I think it was five or six yacht missions that you would do, and you know the Australian captain that was on that yacht would give you a bunch of different uh, missions, usually fighting the Korean mafia, but. They were just so forgetful. Like, I remember there was, like, a diving mission. There was one mission where you had to save the captain. But I completely forgot about what you had to do in most of the missions. They did have a few new business battles, like the aircraft carrier, which wasn't that good of a business battle. It actually got kind of annoying with the AAs. Um, though the warehouse business battle, that one was actually pretty good, where you actually went in and got a lot of different crates in there. Added a few new vehicles, some races. But other than that, this DLC just simply did not add much. It was a very small DLC. And, um, you know, the last DLC that we actually got before this was actually Casino Heist, which was so such a massive DLC, and to go from such a massive DLC in December of 2019 to such a small DLC, you know, in August of 2020, yeah, people noticed it a lot. At number 20, we have the San Andreas Mercenaries DLC in the worst category. This is the last DLC in the worst category. San Andreas Mercenaries DLC, this was actually our most recent DLC. This actually just came out a few months before this video was made. It was our summer DLC in 2023. Now, why was this DLC bad? DLC wasn't as bad as some of the other ones on this list, but I think it was bad for the reason that people were just expecting more from this DLC. You know, I remember people were saying, like, you know, oh, we're gonna get, like, you know, a, you know, we're gonna get a new military business, you know, we're gonna get more things to do with Smuggler's Run, which at least that part was true. We were able to get more things done with Smuggler's Run. The best thing about this update was the fact that you were able to source crates with land missions and these land missions are just so much easier than the air missions they're so much better and whenever people source crates they're almost always doing land missions because they're just so much easier and on top of that they turned the hangar into a solo kind of friendly business you still can't source four crates at a time but what you can do is you can make solo sales if you sell as a land on a land sale you will always have one delivery vehicle if you sell with two people, you have two delivery vehicles, but you only really need to deliver one vehicle to the drop-off at the end. So, you know, having more people, I guess, makes it a little easier, too, but you can always do it solo. So they greatly did improve the, um, they greatly did improve the hangar, and they added the Raiju, which is actually one of the best jets in the game. It's an awesome, amazing jet, and you could argue it definitely is the best jet in the game. It's the fastest jet in the game now. Um, on top of that, they did add a storyline with this DLC, but the storyline, I knocked it out in a single day, and it was boring. It was just going against Meriwether, fighting Meriwether. There was really no cutscenes. There was just one final cutscene at the very end where you just, you know, talk to a general, that's it, but there wasn't really anything much to it. The story was just boring, it's forgetful. You complete it one time, and you really won't be doing it again. It did have some bad missions also. There was one mission where you actually had to fight a ton of Avengers, and that mission was particularly annoying. Yeah, that mission was pretty annoying. Um, you also did have new missions. Uh, these new missions were missions that you actually you could actually start in free mode, and these were missions directly that you would start from your... Uh, from your uh, from your Avenger. You can also now put in a thruster in here, but it wasn't your custom thruster, so they did make the Avenger a little bit better. Uh, some, of these L some of these LSA missions were a bit fun. Others were a little bit annoying. Um, this mission um, can be a bit fun sometimes. Nice, nice. It can be annoying depending on the location that you get. Fortunately, I had the one that was in the city, and so I didn't have that much of a drive at the end. 
um, but these missions pay you around 60 grand. The nice thing about these missions is that you do get a bonus for completing certain optional objectives, but I think what was really lacking in this DLC was just the content. We just did not get that much for it. It was piped up to be this big military DLC, and we really didn't get that much from it. And it, it was the last few DLCs since this DLC before the contract. You know, the contract was the, really the last big DLC that we had gotten. Um, a contract, then we had Criminal Enterprises, Drug Wars, and now this. The last three DLCs just been lacking, which is why I would just put this personally on one of the worst categories DLCs. Next at number 19, we have the first in the average category, which is... San Andreas Flight School, the best of the best. That's right, Flight School, and I think that this is the first update that had a trailer, correct me if I'm wrong on that, but Rockstar releases at the perfect time. They release this kind of late in the summer, but they still release this in summer of 2014, and um, you know, at that time, a lot of people were on vacation from school, vacation from work, people had more free time. You know, typically the months of July and August, you see some of the biggest activity on GT Online, and this was definitely a welcomed update. It was not a big update by any means, it wasn't, but what was great about Flight School is it added a few new, you know, aircraft. It added a few helicopters. Um, you know, it added the um, uh, the Buckingham Swift. It added the um. Uh, Basra jet, which a lot of people still use to this day, and this update was not broken. There was nothing overpowered in it. Um, it wasn't uh, really expensive either. It added basically these flight training missions, and the aviation community in GT Online they really loved it. Um, it was definitely a um, uh, it was definitely a very enjoyable uh, enjoyable update for them. You had a lot of these different courses. Like my favorite one is personally the one with the Basra, where you actually try to keep um, uh, you try to keep a formation with the other planes while they're flying upside down. They're flying in loops. It was a good one, and the thing about this is you can constantly keep trying to beat your record, so the aviation community really loved it. It wasn't an update that made you a lot of money, it wasn't an update that was broken or overpowered either. It wasn't a big update, but everything in it was pretty enjoyable update, which I would say it definitely falls in the average category. It definitely was not a bad update. Number 18 in the average category again, we have Cunning Stunts, which Cunning Stunts came out in August of 2016, and that was a year that Rockstar gave us a ton of DLC in that year, you know, we had gotten the, we had gotten executives and other criminals, we had gotten um, uh, Cunning Stunts, then we got bikers, and then we had gotten, uh, we had also gotten import-export, but Cunning Stunts, uh, this one, this update was an update Kind of similar to Super Sports um, series, it came out about two years, a year and a half before that. It added, you know, these crazy, you know, races where, you know, you're jumping. Um, they later added, you know, transform races where your vehicle would change through the race. A lot of different courses on this, very unique. And, you know, like this one, for example, you know, driving down this huge ramp, just going all the way down, making these jumps. These were actually a lot of fun of players. The unfortunate thing is this update is pretty much dead. I wasn't able to find anybody to play this update with me. And one of the reasons that this update died was because the pay was just not good. If Rockstar had kept a permanent double money on this, I guarantee you would have had more people play. Because whenever they did do double money events on this, People would play them, but what I think killed this update is, um, you know, two months after this, you know, we had Bikers, a massive giant update, and then after that, you know, uh, two months after that again, or maybe two and a half months after that, we had gotten Import-Export, another car update. So this, um, uh, this update was just buried with it. However, though, I will give credit to Rockstar that they constantly kept updating it. It's a little different than Super Sports Series. I know people are going to compare it to what I've been saying earlier, but Super Sports Series was an entirely separate update just dedicated to hot ring um, circuits. It was added as part of these stunt races, sure, but this update itself was something new. When Super Sports Series was added, it wasn't anything um, new. At least Rockstar did add tracks to this over time. They never really forgot about this, and over the years, they kept adding more and more stunt races, and there's just so many of them. I haven't even played all of them. I just wish more people would play them, but like I said, if they want to improve this, just add a permanent double money, and people will start playing it again. At number 17, again in the average category, we have the Criminal Enterprises DLC, which came out in the summer of 2022. Now, some people are probably surprised I have this in the average category. You'd probably be thinking that I would be putting this in the worst category, but I have my reasons for this, which I'll explain. So let's start off with the Criminal Enterprises DLC added a storyline of, you know, Operation Paper Trail of ULP. Same guy from GTA 4, he also appears in the Doomsday Heist. He narrates the um, uh, these missions, he talks to you on a radio. Uh, the entire storyline is very forgetful, it's very similar to 
to um, San Andreas Mercenaries, you will forget this storyline very quickly. Um, it's because there's a really a lack of cutscenes in this storyline. There's only really one cutscene at the start, that's it, where you get sworn in as an honorary IA agent, but that's it. And the storyline is basically trying to stop the one of the Duggan brothers as there's this big conspiracy about gas prices and inflation right now. Kind of a parody on the current um, climate that was actually going on in summer of 2022. But uh, once you forget complete the story, you'll forget about it. However, though, the main thing in this update is the changes to the businesses. So there's a lot of changes to businesses, like bikers had gotten a separate bar business. Doesn't give you a lot of money, but adds a little bit more life to the clubhouse. You know, bikers can now, you know, deliver a custom vehicle every 48 minutes, just like the auto shop garage. Um, uh, uh, CEO Crates also had Lupe, you know, a new contact where she could actually source crates for you when you actually pay her and her associates at each where warehouse, and they'd get you between one to three crates, sometimes even a special crate every 48 minutes. This definitely helped out the crate business, and I didn't mind this update that much because it expanded on the on the existing updates and gave us some more things to do with them. But I would say my favorite thing would probably have to be in a nightclub. In the nightclub, what they actually changed is they made it so that you had specific missions where sometimes you had to deliver like a drunk client home or you had to actually throw somebody at a nightclub. And this would actually get you popularity really quick, which made doing the nightclub much more worth it because in the past, the night, a lot of these popularity missions would just take you so long. But now it was just much more worth it because these missions were just so much easier. You could also call Johan to source things from the nightclub. Um, and so I think there was like a, um, uh, I think there's like a 15 or 20 minute cooldown on Johan, correct me if I'm wrong, but you don't even need to do business battles all the time now. You can also just call Johan, in addition to your nightclub producing, you'll be able to source some stuff, bring it in. But what I will say is, the worst part about this update was actually that it added... Um, a specific CEO crate mission, like a really, really bad one, where you had to, you know, go all the way out, you had to specifically, some nice, the Polito Bay that far out, you had to go all the way out, fight a bunch of turreted trucks, blow them up, then you had to dive underwater, go to like four different crates, you know, um, find out what's inside them, get the stuff, and you think that this was actually the crates that you're looking for, but it's not, and then you have these helicopters that will constantly keep spawning, you have to blow them up, it's the worst crate mission in the game, it's the worst resupply mission in the entire game, and you have to take it across the map, get into a car, drive it all the way, way to the warehouse, and you could get this mission, if you're old, even if you're only sourcing one crate, you could get this mission, it was, it, it really ruined the um, immersion in crates, and if you ever get this mission, it's it, go to Mirror Park, Go to Del Perro or go to Hookies. Hookies is the worst one. Just leave and find a new session. I know you'll lose the money for the crates, but it's not worth doing that mission because it just takes too long. However, though, the main reason that I don't have this DLC in the worst category, even though there was some really bad things in this DLC, is for the simple reason that this DLC let you sell in invite-only sessions and, and friend sessions. So now you could just play with your friends in a session and you could sell your businesses. You don't have to be constantly paranoid, worrying that some idiot is sitting on the orbital cannon getting ready to blow you up or somebody's going to activate ghost organization and go on an oppressor mark 2 and blow you up. This update holds a very special place in my heart, which is why I refuse to put it in the worst category. A lot of people think this update is really bad, but I actually did think it was kind of an average update. I did kind of, I was considering putting it in the great category, but I realized that there's a lot of people that would probably think that it's more of an average update because it's not that big of an update, but it's because I've been able to sell in private sessions and this means so much to me because if you watch my streams in the past, you know how toxic they got, guys. They got so toxic in the past because I, all, all I would be doing, I'm not looking for drama, I'm not looking to start crap with anybody, but I would have these idiots that would just come into my sessions, like every single stream would almost always happen where somebody was just constantly trying to come into the into the public lobby, we're just trying to help people sell their businesses and they would just blow us up with an orbital cannon, destroy the and activate ghost organization and I'd leave a lobby I'd join another lobby to help my friends sell and these griefers would just follow me lobby to lobby to lobby and it was just so annoying and so toxic and they would send me annoying messages but what uh, what finally changed that was this update this is one of the reasons that I got back into GT online because I was able to sell in these you know invite only sessions these friends only sessions and I've been doing that for a year I've been playing in these friends only sessions and I've only had one incident in that entire time in one year just one incident, one person destroying stuff. That was just it. Because I've been able to sell in friends sessions with just no no problem. And think about this update. Think about how much griefing this update um, uh, reduced. This update saved so many people's cargo from getting destroyed, which is why I think it deserves a spot, at least in the average category, not in the worst category. Moving on to number 16, again in the average category, we have Lowriders. Lowriders came out in October of 2015. Let's take a look at the trailer here. Take more than three lunatic gangs and no ideas to stop Lamar Davis. Move it! 
Now, if you take a look at the trailer of Lowriders, the Lowriders trailer is one of the best GT Online trailers ever, and that's why I say you can't really, you can't really um, judge an update by its trailer because an update could have a really crappy um, uh, trailer. Like um, uh, when I saw, for example, the Twisted Metal TV show trailer, I wasn't that excited for it. But then when I, wa when I watched Twisted Metal the TV show, it was actually really, really good. And so you can have really bad up uh, trailers, but have really good updates, and then have really good trailers, but have really bad updates too. Uh, but anyways, about this um, uh, about this DLC is um, a lot of people thought that we were going back to the roots of you know San Andreas with you know the gangs and you know taking turf and stuff like that. And the lowriders were probably you know what stood out in this update is you know they added Benny's Motor Shop Motor Works where you could customize vehicles and they didn't just add lowriders but they added a lot of different vehicles to this over time. So I do got to give Rockstar credit for that. At least they had a bunch of different cars that you could put into this. It did get expensive and you had a little a lot of different changes for your interiors, the wheels. A lot of things that you could see in first person, the dash, everything. However, though, this update, I would say, died pretty quickly because Rockstar is probably thinking that there'd be these big meetups of lowriders, but I almost never see anybody do it, driving lowriders. Even when I see sometimes these car meets, I don't see people driving around with lowriders. It's typically, you know, supercars, sports cars, and, you know, muscle cars. Don't really see much of the lowriders. The thing that stood out to me um, personally the most in this update was, I think, the Lamar storyline. So there was a lowrider storyline where they had Vernon as a character. Lamar was trying to impress Vernon and having the online character steal a bunch of cars and the Vagos and the Balas. Um, Vernon actually later came back in the contract DLC, so we actually see him for the first time ever. So good that Rockstar at least didn't forget about that character. Uh, but the storyline, I think, what could have what could have made this update so much better? What could, they could have done is once you complete the lowrider missions, you're really never going to do them again. And the final lowrider mission can actually be pretty hard, especially with randoms when the gangsters are just coming at you from all these different sides. What I think they could have done at this update is they should have turned this into a heist instead. The, they should have kept Benny's, don't get me wrong, but they should have kept the lowrider missions themselves a heist. It should have been an extra heist that was added, and what happens is when you steal all these lowriders at the end, you have to sell them and something goes wrong, and the Balas and the Vagos attack you, and you give everyone, like, a payout at the end. I think this update, I think, I don't see why it could not have been turned into a heist. I think that's what they should have done, at least. It should have been turned into a heist at the end. And I wish they had a little bit more focus on the gangs. I wish they had had more activities in this in the um, regular free mode on the gangs. Like, imagine if they had something like CEOs, but instead you would be starting up your own gang. And you would invite people to it, and you'd give them different gang ranks, and you have like different gang missions that you could start in like a um, in free mode itself, not just like in the Lamar missions. So I think that Lowriders was a missed opportunity. I did enjoy the storyline. This storyline, don't get me wrong, the storyline was you know ten times better than what we had gotten with Criminal Enterprises and what we got with San Andreas Mercenaries deal. So you know Lamar is really what made the storyline. But other than that, there's a lot of stuff in this DLC that I think could have just it been expanded much more. At number 15, we have Executives and Other Criminals. This was an update that came out in December of 2015, and this update had introduced yachts, which a lot of people got really hyped up for and excited for, and this is actually something that pe the community has requested for a long time. The community has requested yachts. They've wanted to own these. However, though, the thing about the yachts is that a lot of people say that they are the most overpriced thing and most use useless thing at the same time in the game. I don't think that they're totally useless because they are a safe house that you can spawn in on the water. However, though, once you get used to the yacht, you'll think that it's cool for the first few days, you'll get bored of it really quickly. Um, these yachts were very expensive, obviously depends on the version that you get, but you're going to be spending at least a few million dollars. And when you do upgrade these yachts, um, there really isn't much to do on them. There's a few bedrooms, there's some guns you can get, but once you go upstairs, you have a bar and a TV. You know, that's that's really it. There really is not much more. You have a helipad on the yacht, to be fair, but what's made the update stand out the most was the introduction of VIPs. So VIPs were added, and when VIPs were first added, they kind of sucked. Um, you needed a million dollars to be a VIP, and you could only do it for four hours. And if you disbanded the VIP, you would lose it for, you know, 24 hours. So you have to basically play it for four hours straight, which kind of really sucked. Um, however, though, you did, did get a lot of different missions in free mode now. So in free mode, we were actually able to start up missions on our own because before this, you know, we had to do heists um, or, or we had to do contact missions. There really was not any way to make money mainly in free mode, but this was it right here. You know, you had a few events in free mode, but that's about it. 
Here you can actually start missions like Sightseer. So you could start with your CEO, you go up, pick up three packages, and you drive it back, you get 20 grand. Or you could do a mission like Hostile Takeover, where you go and pick up a package from a bunch of enemies, deliver it, you get 15 grand like that. It wasn't like contact missions where it was based on a specific time. The more time you take, the more money you get. These missions you could run pretty quickly, and you would make a decent amount of money. So that's what I liked about this update, is that it gave free mode more life and missions to do in free mode itself. Next at number 14, again in the average category, we have Drug Wars, but a lot of people um, knew this one was going to be in the average category. Uh, Drug Wars is a DLC that came out in December of 2022. Now, Drug Wars added a bunch of new characters. They added Dax, um, Mutt, uh, Labrat, uh, Luchadora, and um, these people had apparently taken over Trevor's, you know, meth operation after Trevor had left um, for some reason. And Ron appears in the artwork, and he appears in the cutscene, but he only really appears in that single cutscene. That's it. He doesn't up make any kind of appearances, which you'd think that Ron would make more of an appearance, but he doesn't. Move, 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 fucking move! Help us get out of this and we'll cut you into the deal. Fuck up these bikers and get my RV back and it's Los Santos time, baby! Whoa, get over to the roof! Show me your butthole, fella! Yeah, that's an introduction to Dax. That is one of the, the characters in there. So there is an entire Fooligan story and what I will say about this is that they did add a storyline, and they did give us a bunch of drip feed content with this DLC. You know, they gave us you know drug, um, uh, you know drug warehouses that you could raid, um, uh, supply houses, basically where you could steal product for your business. They added street dealers later on with street dealers where you could sell like you know individual product to them. So this DLC did add some content over time. However, though, what I would say is the main story itself is kind of a letdown. It was better than San Andreas Mercenaries, and it was better than Criminal Enterprises. However, though, with the story story itself, you had Dr. Friedlander come in as a um, villain, but then he survives. Which, you know, you're wondering how much longer are you going to milk this character, because Dr. Friedlander is one of the most disliked GTA characters, and a lot of people were pissed off that you weren't able to kill him. And then you also have these Fooligan missions, which you had to complete 10 Fooligan missions to unlock an upgrade for your Acid Lab, and these each had a 48 minute cooldown, and some of these Fooligan missions like really suck. I mean, like, look at this, like, like wh what is this exactly? fight this halluc these hallucinations after, you know, you, you attack, like, a, um, a, a weed plant, and then you turn on, you know, you drop acid in their, um, uh, in the weeds, and then your character gets high on it, and you're fighting these clowns, and you're constantly getting knocked out, and you're constantly keep falling down over and over and over again, and that for 60 grand. At least the payout wasn't that terrible, but it's the fact that these, you can only do every 48 minutes, and you gotta get two, 10 of them done to get the equipment for your upgrade. However, the best part of this update, I would say, is the Acid Lab itself. The Acid Lab, I would say, is one of the best businesses in the game, which is why this update gets in the higher tiers of the average um, of category. The Acid Lab, I have no problem with that business. It's a very simple business. It doesn't require that much of an investment. It's not, it's not, doesn't really require that many paywalls, very little to invest into it. It's, it, you know, it is a little expensive, I will say that, but comparing it to other businesses, like, you know, comparing it to Arena Wars, which is so millions of dollars to get into, this update is pretty affordable. At least you don't have to pay for the warehouse that Dax is staying at, and once you have this up and going, you know, you can boost it once per game day, which it'll, um, you know, it'll complete, um, it'll, it'll lower the, uh, cooldown down by an hour, and about four to five hours, your Acid Lab will be fully complete, uh, ready to sell, it's very solo friendly, very easy, it's almost one motorcycle, unless you get more people, then you have more motorcycles, but very easy, very simple to complete, and you can make a ton of money really quickly from it. So I would say plus on the business, but the rest of the update is kind of eh. Number 13 in the average categories is Executives and Other Criminals. Uh, this update came out in June of 2016. I think it actually came out on June 7, 2016, which is actually my birthday. Uh, but anyways, about this update is this update took... Uh, Further, it took executives and other criminals and expanded on that update and made it so much better and it fixed the broken VIP system. So now we had offices and offices, these were very expensive places, especially if you bought places like the Maze Bank, but they were worth it because these places would give you a custom car, a custom garage where you could customize your vehicles. It would give you a, um, a ton of car space. So for the people that wanted so much more car space, it gave you several floors of that. A lot of the car community loved this. It gave you an assistant where the assistant would give you certain abilities, um, be able to call in Pegasus vehicles, but the assistant was also very useful for get, getting snacks. But the best part of this update was that it added the first business. This was the first business ever added to GT Online, which was the CEO Crates warehouse. Now CEO Crates are, I will be honest with you guys, as where 
I made the most of my, my of my money from uh, because they're just very profitable. So if you put time into them, you can make a lot of money. However, though, I understand for other players that it's a very time consuming CEO crates. I would say is probably the most brutal business out there. And if all of them is definitely most brutal, it is the most rewarding, but it's the most brutal at the same time because it's just so long to collect all these crates, fill it up to 111 crates. And if you want to sell in the populated lobby, you get that bonus. It does get very stressful because one mistake and all those crates are gone. So this added the first business to GT Online. You could actually own a property where you could actually make money from it. This was very different than like VIP work. And on top of that, this update expanded onto the VIP work. It turned it into CEO work. So if you own the office now, now you are a CEO, which is even better than a VIP. And it added a few other, you know, uh, CEO works. I believe Headhunter was also added as part of this update, which Headhunter is arguably the best CEO work. You can complete it in less than, you know, five minutes if you're using like a buzzard, for example. And that up uh, that uh, mission where, you know, you take out four targets around, you know, typically the city, uh, you get 20 grand from it. And you could run CEOs forever now. You didn't, re you did not need to be there for four hours. You could disband it and you could start it up whenever you want it. So there was no timer on it. So people could just run CEOs for as long as they wanted and make a ton of money. And every 15 minutes, the same as VIPs, the associates in the um, CEO will get somewhere between five to $10,000, depending on how good you're doing on the work. I think this increased by $500 every crate that you resupplied to. Um, so there was some incentives for people to help you, but most people, when they play the CEOs, they typically did the CEO work. So definitely a great update and very easy. Also, you know, leap from your helipad. This is Typically a place where I spawn in most of the time in GT Online. I always spawn in the office, get my helicopter, and just fly out where I got right in the center of the city, Mace Bank. So definitely one of the better updates, but reason I put it in the average category is because I know there's going to be a lot of people that are going to be saying that the crates are just a brutal business, which I kind of agree with. At number 12, we have After Hours, the After Hours DLC. Now, this DLC, this I think is still probably one of the most underrated DLCs in the game. A lot of people said that this was a boring DLC, but I liked it for a number of reasons. I liked it that it brought in... But they brought back Tony Prince from the Ballad of Gay Tony from GTA 4. Um, they brought back Laszlo from G GTA 5 single player. And they added a bunch of DJs. The story itself, there wasn't really much to it. It was just a few DJ missions. They were okay. Um, at least they had cutscenes behind them. At least actual characters, not just reading text like in some of the other, you know, contact missions. And you could, you know, swap out these DJs. The club had more life to it. It definitely had more life to it than like the yacht, for example. There was more to do in the club. Like for example, some of the um some of the alcoholic beverages that you could have at the bar, you could choose different ones. And it was similar to Ballad of Gay Tony where you shook it and then you could, you know, spray the bottle around. Uh, and when you actually did these activities, you could actually unlock different pieces of clothing. So there actually was more of a purpose to using the bar when it does work, when I didn't have it crash on me, unfortunately. The best part about this update is the business itself. If you have other businesses, you need to have other businesses like, you know, the cocaine, um, you know, cocaine lockup, you know, meth lab. Um, if you have counterfeit cash, if you have a cargo warehouse, if you have bunker, you can link these businesses to, to the nightclub and the nightclub will be producing a separate um, income. So you have, you know, their popularity income where the more popularity you have. These were improved things like criminal enterprises. More popularity you have, you'll generate, you know, income every 48 minutes, not a lot, it but it is something however the main bulk of it when linking those businesses underground you can make a ton you know you could easily make over a million dollars um per each sale after just a few days of playing you don't have to do anything you don't have to fill up the um uh, the nightclub you don't have to buy supplies it'll just produce on its own as long as you have everything linked however though the reason i don't have this update in the um, in the great category, and I still have it in the average categories because this update did something that I think really hurt GT Online, and that was added the Oppressor Mark II. Now, you might disagree with me. I, I've seen a lot of comments people saying, oh, the Oppressor Mark II, it helps me grind. That's fine. I'm happy for you. That's your opinion. But I'm just telling you my personal perspective of being like a hardcore GTA 4 player. Um, you know, I don't think that something like the Oppressor Mark II has any place in GTA Online. I don't think it does. I think it ruins the immersion of the game. Plus all the griefing that has happened over the years. This is actually one of the worst griefing encounters I've had a few years ago. But yeah, the Oppressor Mark II is completely broken PvP. And even after its nerfs, this is still the main vehicle that people use to grief. People spawn this thing. They fly around. They bomb you. It gets really annoying destroying your cargo. They did add things like the terabyte which you need to get the oppressor mark to and the terabyte does help you to you know source crates and do other 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 activities a little quicker but if this update just simply did not have the oppressor mark to i would have put it in the great category no problem just because of that because after hours added this with drip feed the oppressor mark to i just could not let that go i just never forgot about that personally in the average category we have 
the tuners update, Los Santos tuners. Now, I think some people are probably expecting me to put this in the great category, but I have my reasons for why it's an average update. So Los Santos tuner was a decently sized update. You know, we had gotten access to a big garage um, in the south side of Los Santos, in which where we could do car meets. We met a few characters. We met how and a few new characters like KDJ and Sasanta, which we will talk about in a little bit here. Um, this is a place where you could also do car meets with people. This is something that the car meet community has wanted for some time. I haven't ever really seen lobbies do car meets here, though probably when people do do car meets, they probably do them in private sessions most of the time. You can test out vehicles here. There's even procedures in which you could actually sell other player specific vehicles. So if you wanted to, you could buy the vehicle itself, though I haven't really messed around with that ever that much. However, though, the big thing in this update actually comes from the, the Auto Shop Garage. Auto Shop Garage is a new business, and in this new business, we also have the ability to actually deliver certain cars. So there's certain import-export, specific import cars that will spawn around the map that you can go and pick up, you take them to the docks. But also, you have these random cars usually spawn every 48 minutes inside your garage, and you can choose to have a mechanic deliver this, or you can deliver this yourself, you customize it, drop it off, it's easy money here, generally you can do this every in game day. And the best part of this update is the contracts, or I, I like to call them mini heists. These are contracts usually with three missions. Um, two missions, you're getting up things for the setup, and then the third mission, you actually do the heist itself. You can do this with multiple people, or you can do this solo, which I was very happy that you could do it solo. I did every single one of them solo, did an entire series on it, and some of the missions are very enjoyable. They're very fun. Uh, and I'm, I particularly like the Fleesa job one, the one where you have to hit six Fleesa banks, and you have to rush there while the cops are tracking you before you know the timer goes down. I did like that one. I thought that heist was a lot of fun. So now you're probably wondering, okay, professional, so if this update is a lot of fun, adds a lot of content, nothing crazy, nothing overpowered, nothing broken, and adds a new business, then why are you upset? Why do you consider this an average update? I would have given this update easily a score in the great category, no problem, but you a lot of people who play tuners know exactly what I'm going to say. The reason that this update did not get put in the great category is because of the characters. Now, I have never seen a good... DLC become bad because of the characters, but that's exactly what happened here. If you fought LJT and the bikers DLC was annoying, you have seen absolutely nothing. KDJ and Sasanta are the most annoying characters in GT Online. I even did a poll about this a long time ago, and you guys voted KDJ and Sasanta as the most annoying GT Online characters of all time, and I agree. So what's so bad about them? Why are they so annoying? Well, take a look at this right here. When we first are introduced to them, we have a very, very bad introduction how these characters are introduced. This'll do. Shit, this'll do. I could do my thing in here. Where's our partner at? I don't know. We should make ourselves at home, baby. Shit. Mm -hmm. Come here, girl. You can take all this shit off. You a bad motherfucker. Nah, you a bad motherfucker. <laughs> Give me that. <laughs> Bring that ass over here. Shit. Got me all stiff. You motherfuckers been there the whole time? Oh, shit. So these characters, what's particularly annoying about them is you can have one character that's annoying, but I've never seen two characters at the same time that are in almost every scene together that just make it just so annoying. What's so annoying is they're constantly flirting with each other over and over and over again. I get it, they're a couple, that's fine, but why do they have to flirt, you know, every few minutes? It just gets annoying, and why did they have to bring you into it? It's three-way calling, and they're constantly like, having phone sex on the on the telephone. I don't know what what's wrong with them, why they're doing this, and on top of that, they're constantly driving dropping MF bombs every few minutes. I am not exaggerating on this. The amount of curses that they drop, and normally, I don't care about the characters' curses. I play a lot of violent games. I'm used to characters cursing. I don't really have a problem with it. However, though, when a lot of characters in video games like Grand Theft Auto curse, typically they're just cursing just because of the moment. But in this case, they are cursing constantly, and they're cursing to try to make the game funny. However, people don't find this funny. They just find it absolutely annoying. Just listen to this. Listen, don't be worried about that shit we be stealing on these jobs. I run a strictly cash-only business. My clients got their little wish list, but the only thing on my list is paper. You understand? I take a little fee off the top for me and Seth. The rest goes to the motherfuckers with their ass on the line. Shit, we all getting rich as fuck. Fair as a motherfucker. Hi, keep me on speakerphone. Get on the road. Head north and don't waste no time about it. And remember, you're gonna hit that train, steal them ECUs like it's business. 
But one of them motherfuckers going straight in me and Kay's ride. And your paycheck coming straight out of me and Kay's pocket. Let me get him in here. Oh, we're doing three-way calling? We moving on this thing, babe. Alright. Give me a second. Hey, yo, get the fuck out of here, motherfucker. I gotta take this call. Alright, let's do this. We en route. Gonna be at the train in a few minutes. Hey, you told him to be careful with them ECUs, right? Babe, we own this. Girl, I know you down. Just making sure our friends and associates behind the wheel knows what's up. This some sexy motherfucker shit we all stealing. Puts a whole ass supercomputer under the hood. And the one thing you ain't supposed to do with a supercomputer is drop it, shoot it, or anything other than treat it right. Once I get this bitch all hooked up... Once you get it all hooked up... <laughs> uh, you got me. Once my master engineer hooked this bitch up. That's right. My ride gonna be unique, baby. All business, all pleasure. Motherfucker married with the clowns. Not gonna lie, maybe we do. Got more R&D money than the army. But that's why they worth robbing. Ain't nobody gonna make an engine faster than these motherfuckers. Look at this shit. Already on some private military bullshit. Fuck it, you know what? I love this shit. Ain't no different from private anything else. Private property for the take. We on the clock, though, okay? In and out. Shit so tight, we even got the serial number so we know which crate to bust open. My girl. Hey, this ain't no trial and error situation, y'all. Get the right motherfucking crate and we done. It's over. Hey, you working for me this time, remember? This getaway better be silky as a motherfucker. Well done, y'all. We did good. We bank robbers. Hell fucking yeah. Just a fucking shame we can't spend none of these notes. You know they mark. I would have laid these bitches out on my sheet. Me and my girl, shit, we would have had a good ass time. Do I have five stars right now? We gonna have plenty fun anyway. Nah, you talking, baby girl. <laughs> okay. Once we get to those Armenian money launders, we're gonna cut this call dead. Don't you be calling us for a while, all right? And make sure you don't roll up on my man with any heat on you. That'll kill the mood and this whole deal in a hot motherfucking second. That's the thing is, a character like Devin Weston was made for you to dislike him because he was made to be annoying. KDJ and Sasanta were actually designed for you to like them. These characters were created for you to actually enjoy them. But I didn't enjoy these characters. I didn't like these characters. I thought these characters were really annoying and the amount these contracts are actually want these their their dialogue in these contracts is actually the reason that I don't do these that often. I wish that you could just mute the characters in the game without muting the game itself, but it does get it gets so annoying. So if you ever do these contracts, I am not exaggerating. I only showed you guys a few clips of it. The amount of times that they they curse drop mf bombs and are constantly flirting with each other on the phone it's just ridiculous and it's annoying number 10 in the average category we have announcing the grand opening of the diamond casino and resort play around escape the ordinary an exclusive luxury adult playground with limitless indulgences that's right, it is the Diamond Casino and Resort. This is not to be confused with the Casino Heist. We are talking about the Diamond Casino and Resort that came out in June of 2019, or July of 2019, I believe. Now, this update, um, this was what divided the community a lot. Some people think this is a very terrible update. Other people think that it's actually a pretty fun update. I think it's somewhere in the middle. Uh, I think that this was what GT Online needed because we needed more activities. We needed something to be able to do besides just constantly killing and destroying things in the game. And I think the Diamond Casino was the perfect thing for that. So with the Diamond Casino, we had gotten a penthouse, new penthouse that we could customize. However, though, the thing that really sucks about this penthouse is that you get an office, which you buy a computer for, but yeah, you can't even manage your businesses. So I think that that was kind of a letdown right there. But what the update shines in is gambling. And they added uh, a few games, they added slots, Three card poker, blackjack, roulette, um, horse betting. And these games were all fun. They even added a few arcade machines inside the casino and they had spin the wheel. But what I will say about this is that the reason that some people consider this one of the worst updates ever is because not everybody was able to enjoy this update because the gambling was actually banned in a lot of countries. So a lot of countries, this is actually shut down. So if you're actually playing outside the US, chances are you were never able to experience Diamond Casino fully and 
for those people, I can totally understand why you would put that that this update in the worst category. But for me, I did enjoy it. I thought it was a different change of pace than constantly, you know, doing some criminal activity. This DLC, also the story, I'll say the story is pretty good. The, the Changs come back, these were the triads, the Chinese Mafia, that actually went after both Michael and Trevor. Wei Cheng is dead, but what happened is now his son had taken over, but his son is a bit of an idiot. And then later his sister actually comes in, Georgina, in the casino heist. But the Changs were basically acquired this casino, and they were trying to keep it safe from the Duggins, which was a gang from Texas that was trying to expand. And the casino storyline's basically about trying to keep order in the casino and trying to stop the Duggins. The Duggins do end up winning and taking over the casino in the end, but the, the, down, the down thing about the storyline is that even though the storyline was kind of fun. There was one mission I remember that was on a rooftop, and that mission was just really badly designed. It's one of the most annoying missions I've ever seen. Other than that, every single other mission in this was pretty fun. Uh, however, though, they ruined Vincent. Vincent was the most likable character, and he was actually the best character in the Casino DLC. They ruined him, they fired him at the end, and you, would, you were thinking that Vincent was going to play some cr crucial role in the Casino heist, which came out, you know, half a year later. Unfortunately, Vincent only played a minimal role in that heist, so I personally feel like they shouldn't have ruined Vincent as much, because he wasn't enjoying character the profit from half the outlay we'll get along fine but that reminds me Vincent yes sir we'll no longer require your services huh security is something we're more than capable of handling ourselves but given your pass at the desk I see yes sir at number 9, and the first in the great category, we have Import-Export. The Import-Export DLC came out in December of 2016. That was a big year for GTA Online. And this is something the car community absolutely loved. However, though, the downside of this update is that it did have a paywall, which you need to have the office first. But once you have the office, you buy the vehicle warehouse, and when you get the vehicle warehouse, there isn't really any kind of upgrades in here that uh, that affects the value of the cars. Instead, it's just cosmetic upgrades if you want to custom, uh, customize it that way. But basically how it works, it's kind of like crates but for cars, where you would go to the computer, you would source a car, and you could get, you know, low tier, you know, mid-range or top-range um, car. And uh, each range, you know, the higher, uh, higher tiers obviously give you more money. However, though, there was a way to get simply top tier cars if you would just fill up your um if you filled up your vehicle warehouse with enough low tier and mid tier cars you would only have top tier cars that would spawn like in this case here and basically you just keep filling them up low tier and mid tier until you have um until you just keep getting top tier cars because that was like the game kind of worked on kind of that system but basically you steal the car you bring it back to the vehicle warehouse and what you do with that is you customize it and you just drive it off and you sell it and this was like really easy money and you could also sell this in groups so if you had like four vehicles you could get like an order together if you were looking for a specific type of vehicle sell and you get a little bit more money um the associates in this they didn't really get that much money for helping you but this was something a lot of people helped each other out with all the time and later this update was actually improved because what happened is with the criminal enterprise, they did it so that you, you would get a high demand bonus. You didn't get a high demand bonus per player previously, and so now you get that extra bonus. However, the downside of this update, I would say, is that the cars got damaged so easily. I got a pretty easy mission here. I did this mission stealth. I didn't have to deal with NPCs. But a lot of times there's missions where when you're driving the car back, you have a ton of NPCs shooting you and chasing you, and the car loses thousands of dollars in damage within just a few seconds, and you do get a bit annoyed because time is money when you really think about an activities like this. But other than that, I thought that Import-Export was a great update. I have never heard anybody say anything bad about Import-Export. Very simple update, very easy way to make money too. Next at number 8 in the great category, we have Gun Running. Gun Running holds a very special place in my heart because this is the update that really started growing my channel. Before Gun Running, I had 300 subscribers, and that's what I had gotten over a one and a half year period. And with the Gun Running update, I went from 300 subscribers to 10,000 subscribers within just one month. So that's what Gun Running did for my channel. It helped me get that head start there. That's where I started growing on GTA Online. So Gun Running, this was basically an arms dealer update, and they brought in Agent 14, you bought a new business location, which was the bunker, and this was a passive business, meaning that you would buy supplies for it or steal supplies, and it would produce, but once you get the upgrades together, it's actually more effective to buy supplies. It takes five full batches of supplies when it's upgraded, and produces over one million dollars um, in pro profit in product. As long as you sell that in a populated lobby, you'll make a very decent um, profit back. You get a huge amount back, and you can use Ghost Organization too, but you would probably need, you know, three or four people to help you with a larger sale. However, you can just buy one batch of full supplies, like I'm, I did right here, and you can just sell that, 
That'll get you $210,000 back. Plus, it'll get you a, you know, 2% high demand bonus per each player in the lobby. So it was a very easy business to use. Good amount of money you could get from it. The bunker also included a shooting range, which if you actually completed the shooting range, was actually very hard, very challenging. Much harder than the standard shooting range. If you completed the shooting range, you would actually unlock free explosives, free grenade launcher at the back hallway behind this shooting range. And the um, gunnering update also included Mark II weapons, where you could actually customize and change the looks on weapons and they would be more effective, more deadlier, and you got ammunition like hollow points, which would do more damage to enemies without, that aren't wearing armor. You have incendiary rounds, which would set targets on fire, armor-piercing rounds, which would do more damage to uh, to targets that are wearing armor, and you would have FMJ, which do more damage to the, um, to the uh, vehicles, and you would have different sights on these weapons. However, though, the main downside of this update, and this is what held this update back from being in the best category, is research. Research was one of the worst paywalls. So even though this update, you know, was a fun update, it was profitable, you made a lot of good money. It wasn't like Arena Wars, where you put a ton of money into it and you barely got anything back. You actually put money into this update, you get money out back pretty quickly with the bunker. It was a great business. Downside was that research paywall. Research basically was a separate um, uh, tier next to uh, supplies where you would you could either fast track the research or you could complete missions to get research and then you have to wait for the item to be researched and when the item actually got researched you wouldn't even get that for free. And so if you actually fast track the research, I think it was like $220,000 each, then you would you would spend like over $50 million or something something along those lines. So they added a lot of stuff with this update. The downside was the research. The research tab um, really sucked. However, though, explosive rounds for the sniper rifle, I'll say, is probably my favorite unlockable because I personally think that this was so helpful, especially against enemy NPCs and also against jets. The explosive sniper rifle pretty much ended jet griefing for me. I was able to shoot them down pretty easily. Later on, you know, many years later, they were actually patched with the jet cannons were patched themselves, but the explosive cannon was the best counter, uh, the explosive sniper, I should say, was the best counter against that before that um, uh, cannon nerf on the jets. At number 7 in the great category, we have Smuggler's Run, which came out in August of 2017. So just two months after gun running, we got another great update. And Smuggler's Run, this was the update that the aviation community had wanted for so long. And if you ask a lot of aviation players, people who are really into aircraft and GT Online, they'll tell you that Smuggler's Run was the best update for them. It had just so many planes, and you guys see me moving around a lot of the planes in my hangar here. Some of these planes were added as later um, DLCs, but this DLC had added just so many aircraft. Um, it added, like, the Pyro, it added the um, Molotov, it added the Rogue, it added the um, Seabreeze. Uh, it, and this just keeps going more and more. Hunter helicopter, and we just keep going on and on. There's just so many great aircraft that ride. Some of them did suck, like the Mogul, I will admit, and the Bambushka could have been a better aircraft. But overall, the aircraft in this DLC were awesome, and the aircraft, you could customize them, you could put on whatever paint you wanted onto them, and you, you could outfit a lot of them with weapons, and you had a new feature, which was bombs. You could drop bombs. The Rogue is probably my favorite aircraft um, uh, in this DLC, because with the Rogue, you have one person that can pilot it, and you can put the bombs or the flares towards another player and then that way you'll just make bombing runs another player will deploy flares or they will be the ones dropping the bombs so that's what i personally loved about the rogue and then you have other aircraft like the starling which has this crazy rocket engine the starling is a very difficult um plane to master but once you get good with this thing you can shoot down a lot of other players plus ai um helicopters and ai planes as for the business itself, the business wasn't that great. The biggest downside of the business was that y you couldn't get four crates at a time by yourself. You had to do it with f three other people. So if you had one person, you only get one crate. If you had two people in your CEO, you get two crates at a time. Three people, three crates at a time. Um, but the nice thing is you could actually drop the crates in the roof when you're doing the air missions. Um, later on, this update was made much better when they added land missions, which I talked about with... Um, I talked about the San Andreas Mercenaries. So San Andreas Mercenaries did um, make this DLC better, made it a little bit more solo friendly, plus Rockstar increased it from 10,000 crates to $40,000 um, per each crate. So the, the business itself also got better alongside the update, but I think Smuggler's Run probably will go down as one of the best updates this game has had. At number 6 in the great category, we have the original heists. This was probably the most important update GTA Online has ever gotten. 
even though I don't think it's the best update of all time, it's the most important one. Why? Because this update saved GTA, GTA Online. I'm telling you, this game was dying, and it was dying really quick before this update came out. Before this update came out, we didn't really have anything to do. All we basically got was we had gotten Flight School, which is probably the best update before this. Um, you know, we had gotten some contact missions. That's about it. You know, some races here and there added nothing else. There was no real big way to make money, and people were getting bored, and there wasn't really that much stuff to spend your money on, too. People were getting annoyed, a lot of people were stopped playing the game. Even though the PS4 and Xbox One version came out had first-person mode, it did bring some players back. It was still boring, for the most part. However, though, this update, this is one of the largest updates that's ever been added. This update added five heists, so now we had heists, which originally were planned with the, uh, launch of GTA Online, but Rockstar delayed it, and probably gave us, you know, a better DLC in the end, because I don't know what the original heist would have been like, but Lester comes back in the first heist in Fleece a Job, and this heist doesn't have any paywalls, guys. There really isn't any paywalls. All you basically need is an apartment, you know, 10-car apartment garage, which most people would have had, so you just get that 10-car apartment garage, and you can just start running these heists. You get bonuses, big bonuses for completing them the first time. Fleece a Job, a heist with Lester, in which you rob a, um, a Fleece a bank that's on the highway, uh, then we had gotten Prison Break, which includes a new character, Agent 14, a secret IAA, IAA agent, and he's trying to break Rashkovsky out of prison. Um, this heist was also very enjoyable, but some of these missions would get a little bit annoying, which I'll talk about a little later. Then we had Humane Labs, Agent 14 comes back, and he wants us to steal a specific file from the Humane Labs. And then we had gotten Series A, which we brought back Trevor and Ron, which this heist was not as profitable, but it was the funniest heist, I would say, about that. It was entertaining. And then we had the last heist, Pacific Standard, which Lester has you robbing the Pacific Standard um, Bank, probably my favorite one. And so these heists, um, the story in them was actually enjoyable. They did have a story behind them, they had cutscenes, and it was actually a lot of fun. Uh, the downside of these heists was... There really wasn't any approach choices. You could choose certain roles for people on heists, but there wasn't really a choice in the approach that you would take on the heist itself. On top of that, it was that players would constantly disconnect, and you needed four players for almost every single heist except the Fleece of Job. So you needed three other players with you on setup missions. On certain these setup missions, you could do by yourself. Like, for example, the Vellum with the Prison Break. I don't understand why you would need, you know, four people to do that heist, for example, but you would need three other people for it, and you'd be sitting in that lobby, you'd be waiting for somebody to join, people would take endless forever to join, and then when you get to the end of the heist, when you're at the finale, you would have that random that would start complaining about he heist cuts and be like, I want 25%, when the fairest cut that you could do is host gets 40% and the other three gets 20%. Why is that fair? Because the host has to pay the setup fee and the host does not get paid for setup missions. So that's a way for the host to get their money back, but so many randoms would join heists and they wouldn't understand this that the host doesn't get paid for setup missions and they, don't, and they have to pay the initial setup fee and they would complain, I want 25%, so I remember the nightmares with that. Plus, you had the people failing. If anybody died during these heists and point, what would happen is the heist would restart. This is a perfect example of, um, of a heist fail. This is from one of my videos that I recorded a few years ago, top five most annoying things that randoms do during heists. And this, I was playing this with a random, I didn't even know who this guy was, he wasn't on my friends list, but um, I didn't want to embarrass him, so I didn't want to show his name. But basically what happened is, during the prison break heist, we were going towards the prison, and I put this random, this low level, in charge of the plane. I was thinking, he can't possibly mess that up if it's just a plane. And you know what he does? He crashes the plane and blows up twice twice before we even got inside the prison like how do you blow up the plane when we just start the heist like how do you even do that so people would just fail in the most ridiculous uh, ways and it would just annoy people so much so there was a lot of fun with heists but there was also a lot of rage with it too and the last update in our great category is doomsday heist doomsday heist is a bit of a controversial update but i still think that it was a great update this update came out in december of 2017 now, this came out of nowhere. Nobody really expected another heist um, right now, but Doomsday Heist added a new property called a facility, um, which you would buy and customize, and the facility actually added a ton of new vehicles, everything from a thruster jetpack to the new Avenger, you know, helicopter. Um, it added the Chernobog, a SAM, you know, surface-to-air missile launcher. Um, it added the Kanjali tank. So it did add, you know, some pretty unique, um, cool vehicles. Some of the vehicles were more bad, but some of them were cool. Um, it also had the Deluxo, which is a little bit of a controversial vehicle, which is a vehicle that can um, fly and also fire very accurate missiles, missiles that would almost always hit you. It usually became a common griefing vehicle before the Oppressor Mark II actually came out half a year later with the, uh, or 
with the After Hours DLC. But with this uh, update, the main thing is the heist itself. The heist, we have three acts in it, and it's basically Avon Hurts, this, you know, billionaire, you know, it, billionaire comes to Lester, tells him about this threat that's going on. He has his Clifford AI to try to help you stop this threat from the Russians, but it turns out that these Russian submarine that gone rogue is actually the ones who are trying to stop Clifford. So in the first act, you try to get to the bottom of what's going on exactly, and you find out that it's probably the Russians who are doing it. Act 2 of the heist, you confront the rogue Russian submarine, board their submarine, and then you find out from Bogdan the truth. Stuck in the stick, you're up creek with battle of crap! Look, look, I, how you say it, I am here to help! No. That's code name Bogdan! Him. No, kill me all you like, but stop. Listen, 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 listen. Sure, I would like to destroy America, control Russia, and destroy fabric of civilization as we know it. But these are all piping dreams. I am here to help solve real problems. You! You are real problem! You're doing dirty work for Avon Quartz and his machine, Cliffy. Oh, cigarette, cigarette. <laughs> Oi, now, listen. Think about it. If you let insecure little egomaniac play God, then fake human brain he builds will be brain of insecure little egomaniac. My scientists have studied Clifford. Clifford <laughs> is an asshole. The AI is an asshole. Exactly. And him and Quartz want us to kill each other. I don't believe a word of it. Well, how do I make this up? How indeed. Well, thank you, Bogdan. Thank you, Mr. Crest. Thank you, silent, psychotic peons. But this, this is where I say arrivederci. No, I mean, uh, get ready. I mean, this is where I'm in charge. Me and Clifford. Go fuck yourselves, losers. Yes, losers. Yes, we're in charge. Me and my dad. We're in charge. Mm. And this outdated low-tech submarine will self-destruct it. Holy seconds. I knew this was gonna happen. I told you. I have secret escape pod. Good luck. You find out Avon and Clifford are trying to take over the world, and in Act Three, you know. Avon and Clifford build a clone army, and they try to take over an old nuclear missile site, and they try to destroy the world, uh, which becomes really weird and ridiculous, and you have some, you know, juggernauts, for example, that come up, and these juggernauts, oh my god, yeah, yeah, invisible juggernauts, yeah, that is just, uh, that's just something that's just... I, I never thought of something like Rockstar adding something like that, but my main concern with the Doomsday Heist is it was a great update, it had a lot of content to it, and it did add a heist, a new heist, which was a great new source of money. It let you play the heist with two players, so you didn't need to play it with four players anymore, you could do the entire Act 1, Act 2, and Act 3 with two players, and so you could give yourself bigger cuts. The downside of this update is that you had some really, really bad missions. There were some missions in the Doomsday Heist, like there's that one mission, Escort ULP, which I think is the worst setup mission in the entire game, where you have to protect ULP when he's in this small Havoc helicopter, following him along this highway, and you have like a hundred of Avon's helicopters that keep jumping you. It gets really, really annoying. And then the Act 3 finale is probably the hardest heist mission of all time. And in that mission, there's so the enemies have ridiculous amounts of health. If you don't shoot them in the head, you shoot them a bunch of times in the chest, they fall to the ground, they get back up, and they aimbot you. That's the things that I think was kind of annoying about that update. But this update, it didn't learn from the original heist update, which the, orig the original heist did not give us the option to choose how we want to go about the heist. You would still have to be forced to do it the specific way that the game told you to. This wouldn't be improved until finally with the casino heist. But the worst thing about this DLC, I would say, was probably the orbital cannon, which should have never been added to the game. And here you see some gameplay from years ago of just me getting griefed on live streams. And I can't imagine the amount of people that got griefed with this thing. There's been a glitch with the orbital cannon for years, for years, where people would just blow people up, 
close their application, rejoin, the person would lose all their cargo, they wouldn't get that back, but the person wouldn't have to spend any money and would just keep being able to go on this stupid weapon and just blow them up whenever they want. Other than the orbital cannon and some of the annoying missions though, the heist itself was kind of fun, it was a little ridiculous in the futuristic um, aspect, but I still think it was a great update and it definitely added a lot of good content to the game. At number 4, and this is now in the best category, we have the Bikers DLC. I guess I might be biased that I think that Bikers is one of the best updates, but I like Bikers stuff a lot. I was a very big fan of the Lost and Damned in GTA 4, and Rockstar adding a DLC like this into GTA Online, this definitely made me very happy. Now, the Bikers update, it revolutionized, it changed G GTA Online, because you only had CEOs beforehand, but now you have motorcycle clubs. Think about how much motorcycle clubs have changed GTA Online, because you could have previously four people in a CEO, now you can have eight people in an MC, and you can promote people, you can make people vice president, road captain, sergeant at arms, and these would have different abilities for these ranks. But on top of that, you had things like MC contracts, which were kind of like, you know, biker CEO missions. These weren't not ever that popular people. They were they were actually a few more added with criminal enterprises in 2022, but I did enjoy some of these MC con contracts, and these were actually the most profitable and you had more people. The more people you had, typically you would get more money, because a lot of these missions, there was b extra objectives. So like, for example, the safe one, you'd have four bags instead of two if you actually had four people, which would give you more money for a mission like that. But, but they also brought back Malk, which Malk was an important character in The Lost and Damned. He's the one who actually gives you missions inside the clubhouse. You got the clubhouse property, and the clubhouse property, I think this is probably the most boring part of the update. This could have been expanded. They should have added a pool table in here. I really think they should have. They had it in GTA 4 in the Lost and Damned clubhouse, which that's what bikers like. They like pool. So I don't know why there was no pool table ever added. You did have things like arm wrestling, and you had darts, but a lot of people didn't hang out in that. But what this update is the best in is... The MC businesses. The MC businesses that you guys see me going to, you have a document forgery, you have a, a weed business, counterfeit cash, meth, and coke. And I think these added definitely uh, a lot of role-playing to the criminal element of Grand Theft Auto Online. Because these were the first passive businesses when you really think about them. This was the first passive business that really came out when you think about it. Um, you had the first manual business with CEO crates, but this was a passive business, which means you would buy supplies and the businesses would produce. And on my live streams, my, my subscribers, my viewers, have made the most amount of money on their characters from these MC businesses because on my live streams all we do is we just help people sell these MC businesses most of the time when you watch guys watch my live streams most of the time we're helping people sell MC businesses and these have gotten a buff these are actually have gotten an increase in pay lately um you know as ever since the ever since the PS5 version there's been a little bit of an increase in them and it was eventually added to the PS4 version so they get you even more money but before those increases you could make close to 2 million dollars a day just with these MC businesses, $2 million real life days. You would obviously need, you know, three people minimum, I would say, to help you sell these MC businesses. But if you had friends helping you, you know, they'd get, you know, between 30 to 50 grand for helping you sell an MC business. And then you could help other people sell their MC businesses. So it's a great source of money. And what I also loved about the uh, M bikers update is I love the sense of role playing, like driving in a biker formation. Though one thing that does piss me off is I wish you had the indicator on the bottom of your screen. So like in the Lost and Damned, how you saw like the little lost symbol on the bottom of the road, I wish you would see that in GT Online, but it's instead just on your mini map. But like it in this video, which I was talking about, like the features in GT Online, me and my friends are riding in formation. A lot of people don't know that if you actually ride in formation, this will repair your bike, but not only will it repair your bike, it'll actually give you health and armor. I really wish that more people would have role played as bikers um, in this game because I do think that it's a lot of fun, and I personally think bikers is one of the all time best updates that's ever been added to GT Online. At number three, we have the casino heist. Socialite. She was just voted the 89th best dressed lady in China. Yeah, yeah. Ni hao. I did my undergrad in London, my master's in Vespucci Domestic Crest. You can speak English. It's a pleasure to meet you. Likewise. Miss Cheng has come to Los Santos to deal with a regrettable incident. Oh, let me guess. The Diamond Casino and Resort? You upset that Thornton Duggan muscled you out? My older brother was in charge. He was taken advantage of. Yeah. This is a perfect example of Rockstar taking one update, an average update, the original Diamond Casino Resort update and turning it into something much better and, it, and greatly expanding on it. This is what heists originally should have been. This update had just so much content and not only did it have so much content but it was fun in the way that's, that you made money. A lot of other times when you were making money for a lot of these businesses in GT Online it felt like a grind to you. It felt like you were an errand boy. It felt like you were constantly just doing the same thing over and over again. But this changed everything so much. There was so much content, so many approaches. If you wanted to rob this casino, you could do it the Bugstar's way. You could, you know, throw a bunch of uh, 
garbage in front of the casino, create an infestation of bugs, then sneak your way in as a bugster's exterminators and get to the vault that way. You could also hijack an armored truck and you could then sneak your way into the vault as an armored truck, guys, and just walk right in and get the money out. You could also uh, get do it stealth. You could also sneak in go Special Forces style, knock out the power, use an EMP device, and steal all the money. And if that's not good enough for you, you could do it loud. You could also do it loud, blow up the underground, fight your way through, and just get right to the vault, use a bunch of charges, blow open the vault, just like in the movies. So there's just so many approaches to this heist, and you could choose the getaway cars too. These, they got rid of setup missions. There was no more setup missions. Instead, it was just prep missions, and all of these were done in free mode, and you could do all of the prep missions solo. You obviously needed a second person to do the, the finale with, but you could do all the preps by yourself and in an invite-only lobby, which just made it beautiful. And there was optional preps. There was optional preps, where you could get the guard patterns, you would find out where the guards were walking, you could also find out where the security cameras were, these weren't necessarily that you had to do, and you could also um, do dug and shipments, where you could weaken the guards' armor, so these were extra things that you had to think about, do I want to go straight in the heist, or do I want to do this? And the heist payout was not always the same, you had different targets, cash, artwork, gold, sometimes you had diamonds spawned during events, uh, this heist was just endless with the amount of possibilities, and and there is so many other approaches that I did not mention to you guys. So I definitely think that Diamond Casino is one of the best DLC. Some people think that it's the best DLC now because of the Cayo Perico nerf. But I don't necessarily think that. I still think it's one of the best DLCs of all time. And I think that this is really what saved heists. Because before that, heists just felt like an annoying thing to do. And you would just think that a random is going to mess it up every time. But now you can do this with two people. And it was just something more enjoyable. You could choose the way you want to do it. The approach you want to go about it. What optional preps you want to do and do it with your friend and this is all the different targets you had every single time it was a different experience which is what I loved about this heist this is what heist originally should have been just like this and the number two best update in the game Hey, what's up? Can the low come up in your crib? Man, what? fuck you, man. My kids up in there. I don't want your ass up in my house, nigga. Oh, nigga don't hate me because your kids love me more than they love you. Maybe if you quit being so uptight... Is he and roasting him? Some game, ...you'll have some harmony in your household. Nah, I just wanted to get in the hot tub, but now I don't even want to get in no funky-ass cum bucket. Nigga, fuck around and get pink eye. Because you's a dirty-ass be thy easy itch. What? That's right, the contract. This DLC came out in December of 2021. And I'll say about this DLC is this is a DLC that was made for the fans of single players. This was a, a DLC where I criticize Rockstar a lot in this channel. They do some stupid things. But this DLC, there's nothing greedy about this DLC. This DLC was a DLC made primarily for the fans of single player. And I do want to applaud Rockstar for it. They did a great job with this DLC. One of the all-time best. Brought back Franklin and Lamar. But here's the thing. This DLC finally confirms to people that GTA Online is set in the future. We know that GTA Online has been set years after GTA um, GTA 5 single player ended, but a lot of people refuse to believe that. But here, you see Franklin older, he's in a relationship with Tanisha, and you see an older Lamar also. So Franklin is now a multi-millionaire. He is running an agency in which he helps different celebrities, and he comes in contact with Dr. Dre. Dr. Dre plays himself, and Dr. Dre's um, phone gets stolen with his latest album on it, and you have to try to get it back for him. There's an entire Dr. Dre storyline for this, and it's actually a pretty good storyline. I actually did enjoy it. I thought it was a lot of fun. The Dr. Dre storyline took me about two hours to finish, which is one of the longest um, GTA Online stories. But there's also another story that they added in here. They also added Franklin and Lamar co-op missions. Which, this is what happens when you go into the Dr. Dre studio, your GTA Online character gets high, and in the meantime, Franklin and Lamar go take care of something. And usually it's Franklin helping Lamar fight against gangs that are going after his new weed business. And so this is just such a big throwback to a single player. Freedom, success, and understanding. Bless the tools. Hey, can I show you something that's gonna blow your mind? Hell motherfucking yeah! <laughs> Marnie, you ready? Okay. Look at your van. This is where you are right now, stuck in the present. But with Jimmy on board, whoa, you enter a world of limitless possibilities. What is that? Bitch. I 
thing they're trying to take over is uh, organization. You fucking with me, right? And, and nothing's final. It also has to get signed off by marketing and go through legal, but what we end up with is They're trying to scam Lamar and take his Come his on, business? Man. Yeah. I'm the LD and LD Organics. I am the brand. Without me, all you got is weed and some Epsilon alien looking fake ass life guard. Come on, look. Hey, 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 hey. That sounds objectionable. Back it up there, buddy. I mean, without my name recognition, this business is dead in the water. I mean, whose face do you think these kids want to see on the side of their bongs? Hey, Lamar. Lamar, I got to holler at you real quick. Hey, look. <laughs> Jimmy, let me get a minute. Give me a minute, man. Let me handle this business. Big deal's going on. I hope he's not an unsavable. Kiflam. 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 Man, what the fuck, F, man? I'm in the middle of this plate, man. What's happening? Hey, man, what you think a vine with asshole like that gonna do with your business? Look, man, you either gotta eat shit from these people, or you gotta tell them what the fuck to stick in. Man, why you trying to come at me like you my daddy or something, man? I don't even know that fool. You can't have it all. And why I can't have it all? I want it all, man. Big dog, big nuts, big dreams, man. Don't I deserve this shit after all the shit I've been through, nigga? Shit, not really. Oh shit, hold on. Hey, nigga, it's a whole bunch of Hispanic dudes coming your way. The S, the SA's here? They here? Hey, I'ma cover you from up here, bro. Hey, Jimmy, get your bitch ass out the way before you get your noodles blown, man. It's about to go down. <laughs> I never thought you'd be able to play as both Franklin and Lamar and GTA um online, but Rockstar wasn't making any money from this. You know, this wasn't something that they were trying to get milk shark cards from, but this was something they primarily did for the fans, which was awesome. But there's even more to this update. This update adds a new business, which is the agency. The agency um, allows you to do that Dr. Dre storyline that I was talking about, but also it brings in agency contracts. These are new free mode missions, and these actually pay pretty good, and you have different difficulties on them, specialists being the best difficulty. Some of the missions aren't that great. Um, like, there's that one mission where you try to, you know, defend the valuables, and, you know, NPCs keep coming in for, like, 10 minutes. But most of the other ones are actually pretty good, and the agency um, uh, contracts... They'll actually make you a decent amount of money. If you combine them with CEO work and you combine them with other businesses, you make a lot of money. But there's also even more. You also got the EMP launchers, which added a new weapon, but you got the Imani Tech vehicles. The Imani Tech vehicles, like notably the most popular one being the Buffalo STX. The Imani Tech vehicles add a no lock on onto these vehicles. So this is actually reduced the amount of griefing. So when you drive around in a vehicle like the Buffalo STX, it can't be locked onto by things like the Oppressor Mark II. And you can also remotely control the car. So this DLC added a ton of stuff, didn't break anything, didn't add anything overpowered. There was no paywalls in this DLC. There was nothing greedy in this DLC. And it was a big throwback to the single player, which I have to thank Rockstar for. They truly cared about the fans when they made this DLC. And number one, the number one best update in GT Online in my opinion, a lot of you guys have probably seen this one coming. Oh, here he is. Davey! <laughs> Welcome to paradise. Ah, Monsieur Rudy. Ah. Hold me blonde, eh? <laughs> Look, hey. I'm breathing, you guys. Oh, look at you. Oh, pleasure, you man. You guys are so fucking cool, huh? Eh? Nice to meet you. Hey, everything good, huh? Eh? Flight was okay. You got everything you need. Yeah, we good. Great. The flight was easy. No That's problem. Amazing. Thanks for having us, Juan. But, wait, are you shitting me? No, thank you, huh? Eh? My opa was German. Must be why I love the techno. Ah, <laughs> we got some cool stuff planned. <laughs> I just want to say a few words. We're all here because of one man. The kindest most generous man I know, Juan Strickler, El Rubio, my brother. Whose party is this? I don't know, but it's gonna be sick. A lot gets written about you on the internet. They talk about cocaine, turf wars, missing journalists, but you know what they never say? <laughs> How big your heart is. You're beautiful, you're a humanitarian, and you throw the best parties in the world. So from all of us, we thank you. Stop it, stop it. I said, oh, come on. I said, no speeches. Huh? You're embarrassing me. Huh? But thank you, my brother. Well, maybe more like my half-brother, eh? <laughs> hey, he's got a lot of hits from the 2000s, eh? All right. Who's ready to fucking party? I give you kind of music. That's right. It is Kyle Perico. Now, this is going to be a bit of a controversial one, and this part, I had to change up my initial recordings on this because of the Kyle Perico nerf. There's some people that I know are going to put in the comments, professional Kyle Perico doesn't deserve to be number one anymore, especially after the nerf. But I'll tell you this, even with the nerf, 
it, it is annoying. I will agree with you guys. I think that the, the nerf was just too much. It really destroyed Kyle Perico by taking away 30% of the cut. I still think it's the best DLC because it added a new map. It added a new island. It added a brand new storyline, and it added. It went back to the roots of of GTA. It added the cartel. It added a new scary villain, and with that new scary villain, Rubio, he he was this cartel boss that owned this giant island. He was inviting various celebrities on it, but he was also a massive cocaine distributor. And you met this new guy called Pavel, um, you know, Russian submarine captain. You add, add they added a new vehicle, the Kasatka, a submarine that you could spawn on and mess around with. This submarine lets you plan out the heist, and this heist, unlike the, the, the casino heist, you can do this entire thing solo. You do not need anybody else to help you with this. You can do the whole thing solo. There might be certain places like the gold, which you can't access unless you have another friend with you, but you can do the entire heist solo, and I was able to run the entire heist solo. I still got, you know, over a million dollars after the nerf. So you can, still can make money. I know it's not as profitable anymore. It's not as good anymore. But I just like this. It's a heist that you can just run by yourself. You don't need to rely on anybody else. And there's just so many different approaches with this. And you can keep doing the same approach as much as you want. It's not like the casino heist where it locks you out of this, the same approach. You have to do a different approach. You could, for example, swim underwater. You could cut the gate. Uh, and you could go up there through that vent, through that tube, go right into Rubio's compound directly. Or what you could do is you could land at the airstrip, pretend to be a smuggler like I did, go into the different um, cages, get cocaine from them, then make your way up to the compound, kill a guard, get his key card, get in that way. Another way that you can get in is you can jump in from the sky. You can get a plane, do a, a landing, do special forces style. You could also go loud if you wanted to. You could go loud, do a crazy attack, blow open the gate, shoot all the guards. My favorite approach, which is the truck approach. The truck approach, you get a disguise, and you get the truck, you can just drive right into the compound. That is my personal favorite way to get in there. Inside that compound, they will not be so simple. If things get out of control, stick to... Why are you driving? That is a good question. Why am I driving? Hold up. Let's take a look at you. Okay. This was a good idea. Okay. And a lot of people I've noticed they say that Cayo Perico is a boring heist. But when I when I look at these people that say that Cayo Perico is a boring heist, you know what I notice about them is that they're always doing the exact same approach. They're always doing the underwater approach, going in from the submarine, going in through the tube, and then they say that it's boring. But why don't you try doing the other approaches? You can still get Elite Challenge doing the other approaches. You definitely can. So that's what I love about Cayo Perico is it added a brand new location, a new heist, and just so many different possibilities that you could go about it. Yes, I know the nerfs are annoying. They first made a nerf with the guards, where the guards will see the, the bodies now, and then they cut the pay by 30%. It's annoying. But despite that... I truly still believe that Kyle Perico is the best DLC in the game, and I think that it has a pretty scary villain like Rubio. I think it has the best villain out of all the DLCs. Okay, this must be inside the compound. Looks like Mr. Rubio. And Gustavo. He was at the plane. Oh, is that a panther in there? You know, there is old Russian proverb. Do not trust Jarmin with panther. Oh. oh shit. Oh no. This will sting. Oh! No, no! 
So if you ever get bored of Kyle Perico, try different approaches. You can still get Elite Challenge on it. I mean, you can even, you know, get um, Powder, and you can throw that into the, um, you can throw that into the uh, Water Towers, and when you do that, the guards will actually be slower. So there's just so many different endless possibilities that you can do uh, with Kyle Perico. That's just what I absolutely love about it. I, I do think that it's w the best DLC that's ever been added to GTA Online, and I think that GTA Online should do another DLC like Kyle Perico to be its final DLC. I think that they should add maybe a new heist location, maybe go into North Yankton. Maybe they could do some nuclear missile silo in North Yankton or something like that, uh, where you have to go across across the U.S. into a different place and plan it out. So that's what I think they should do. I think they should take the Kyle Perico formula and apply it to a new DLC. Just don't do any stupid nerfs. But yes, I know I'm going to have people criticizing me in the comments. I don't support the nerf. Don't get me wrong. I'm not, I'm not defending what Rockstar did with the nerf. I think that it's stupid. I made, you know, a video, you know, talking about how Rockstar is ruining and destroying the heist. But despite that, I still personally think that it's the best DLC, even despite the nerfs. But let me know what you guys think below. Do you agree with my list? Uh, do you dis uh, disagree? Let me know. And if there's any other uh, DLCs that you think should be number one post them down below and i'll try to reply to as many people as i can thank you guys for watching happy 10 year anniversary of gt online i still can't believe that this game is 10 years old but it's here it is 10 years old and man this game has come a long way so thank you guys for watching see you guys on the next one take care everyone have a wonderful day guys